Hey everybody, this is uh, this is Perch. I just I'm like, who is this? I, I don't anyway, uh, let's go with this. A glimmer of hope. What's a glimmer of hope? It says, "Hey Perch, love the channel. While I normally stick to just watching and never commenting, I just can't stand how negativity continues to be there when great stuff is going on with the indies and the mainstream." Um, I've I've been hearing a lot about this lately. More and more people are seeing positive things occur. And I don't know if it's a combination of, of more positive things are occurring or if just more people are starting to discover that they, you know, there are a lot of indies and there are a lot of books that just need to kind of branch out. I also think we're, we're entering this new state, or God, I hope so, where people are just paying a lot less attention to what's going on in social media. And I think that's that's nothing but positive, uh, a positive development that, that needs to just, you know, continue to ramp up and occur because... You know, that there's just so much bullshit and then people get attention from that bullshit. And a lot of people have, have really acclimated to the idea of, you know, any attention is good. And, you know, and here we are. So anyway, let's uh, let's continue with the mail. It says, um, I'm buying tons of comics lately from indie creators like Billy Tucci, Aaron LaPresti, Ripiverse. I've also got dragged back into comic shops all due to the dastardly Jim Zub and his awesome Conan book, which has now led me to the Inner John Universe Ultimate Spider-Man by Hickman. And for the first time, my ever, oh, my ever, my own pull list. There's still a lot of problems in the industry, but there's been a lot of good coming out recently. If people can shift from the negative and focus on the good, maybe the industry won't completely fall apart. We we'll ramble enough. Hope this finds you well and have a great year. Um, so yeah, I mean, what's what's wrong with a little sunshine and rainbows? Look, I, I think um, there is good stuff out there. The trick is finding it. The trick is is you know landing you to that stuff. And by the way, I, I think the other thing that's uh, that's worth noting out there is that, you know, not everyone needs this. Not everyone has the same stuff, has the same interest. Um, I had a, a very healthy conversation through email. A guy didn't want me to to read it over, on, you know, as a as a viewer mail, which is totally fine. But um, just a very healthy conversation. This person loves the Krakoa era, doesn't understand why I don't like it. And we had a positive discussion on it, but it all comes down to this. Things hit everybody in their own ways. We know this. You know, there's food you like that others don't like. There's drinks. I mean, imagine, by the way, if you only liked hamburgers and so you were super pissed off that people didn't like hamburgers. I mean, that would be insane. That'd be like if uh, you didn't want to eat meat and then you constantly, constantly bleated and yelled and bitched at other people who ate meat. Those people would be annoying as hell, right? It's a good thing those people don't exist. But, you know, we all like different things. That's just that's just life. And so the trick is figuring out what things you like and then having the confidence to stick with it. And I think that this um, that last bit is kind of understated because for a lot of people, we get kind of guilted into or, or I don't know, it feels like pressured into liking a certain thing or, you you know, you can't not like. Like, for example, if you like Nickelback, God help you. But, you know, good for you. I, I mean, if, if you, it brings you joy good for you. If you like going to Arby's, good for you. You will die young, but that's okay because you'll die happy, you know, and that's, that's really what, uh, what life's all about. So at any rate, we were having this conversation about the Greco era. And at first I was starting to like, well, here's my problems with it. It's this and this and this and this. And I was giving my best kind of logical arguments like, Hey, the, the absence of death has removed the stakes and the fact that the villains are all kind of faceless, you know, mob kind of armies versus actual villains who plot, you know, we, we rarely see, I mean, it, the, the crappy part about the X-Men is that, you know, when they set up Nimrod, they set up kind of leadership of Orcus and they set up uh, the children of the vault. There were some, you know, legit kind of villains in there. Some, some big characters that, you know, were, were important. And, uh, but by and large, we rarely see them. You know, we, we got way too enamored with sinister bullshit and it just, it, it just, I don't know. It, it just came apart. And so that's, uh, that's my problem. And so, but anyway, I'm going through all these logical reasons. Like, here's why I don't like it. Here's why the structure is no good. Here's, here's, they tried to do too much too soon. They just, you know, 12 titles, the universe didn't support that. The logic wasn't good. It just, it took the morality. I like, there's just lots of issues that I had. And, uh, the person I was arguing with goes, yeah, but I like it. You know, I can, I can guess I can, you know, at the same time, you know, we're really going to say, you know, oh, now death doesn't matter. I mean, death doesn't matter faster in the X universe, but it's, it's not mattered in comic books for a long time. If people want to come back, they find a way to bring them back. 
the fact that it's kind of a revolving vending machine of resurrection now is, uh, you know, is, is just cutting to the chase a little bit. But anyway, that, you know, it, it, it's anyway, God is basically saying, I, I hear your complaints, but uh, I like it anyway. And I don't think those complaints are that bad. In which case, done. Like, like literally like, okay, problem solved. Um, I, you know, it doesn't need to go further than that, be, be any bigger than that. If you like it, you like it. Um, in comics right now, wherever you happen to go to like comics, great. I think the things to avoid, and uh, this is an all sides thing, is the people who really don't want you to like comics. And there are those people. If you are finding love in the crowdfunding books uh, that you like, like some of the ones you mentioned, uh, there are people inside the quote-unquote mainstream who will tell you those comics are shitty and bad and the people who are making them are bad. Um, don't you got to ignore all those people. It's none of their business what you like. And somebody who's leading with the you shouldn't like somebody or something is not your friend. By the way, same thing goes for the mainstream. If you like Zeb Wells' Spider-Man, if you like the Krakoa era... You know, anyone who's telling you you're wrong for liking that stuff or you're an industry shill or a cadre, I see these videos that come out and the hosts seem to take delight in shitting on people who actually like what the big two are putting out. And if that's your preference, there's nothing wrong with that. It's none of their business. These people are, are you know, I, the word grifter is used too often, but that is what it is. It's you can't like that. By the way, I have an alternate product like mine instead. It's it's the most transparent and hollow form of like my shit and don't like that other shit. You like what you want. And even though people are like, oh, I never told anybody they, they didn't have, they, they couldn't buy something. Yeah, except when you do, you know, long videos or live streams or posts or tweets or whatever it happens to be where you basically shit on anyone and don't, don't try to dress this up with like, a, oh, you know, people should be able to take a little bit of bull. People need to be man, men and take a little bit of bullshit. Yeah, a lot of the people who say that have the absolute thinnest skin of anyone I've ever met in my life. But, but anyway, just like what you like. And anyone who is telling you not to like something or trying to inform you about what you shouldn't like is somebody you should be extremely suspicious of. Again, whoever they are. And it's sometimes tough. I've done reviews, and I've said this comic is absolute crap. I think the uh, I, I did the first uh, fall, the House of X, or what you know, and I, that comic hated it. I just just absolutely despised it. But that's my opinion and mine alone. I don't want that to become your opinion. A lot of these talking shows, uh, a lot of this, the, the videos and everything else, I I believe it's it's you know the person's self worth is to try and get you to believe what they believe. And that's not the case here. At least not with me. I, I, I'm more comfortable if you don't. Again, I don't know if this is a generate. Maybe this is a, again, it's a Gen X thing where, you know, group think is highly suspicious. The problem with Gen X is that we, uh, we thought the, the whole presidency and the government was a bunch of bullshit. And so it's kind of skipped our generation. And uh, that, you know, arguably somebody with this kind of point of view should have probably been, been running for president. Probably. But anyway... Um, I think that, uh, I think that you just, you, it's healthy to be suspicious of people who tell you what to do. And if that tell you what to do is, you know, you have to go love this or you have to go buy this, you know, that's somebody who's trying to just replace your thinking with their own and you should reject that full stop. Glad you got into the dastardly gyms up. I continue that, that comic is tremendous. I'm sorry. That's, it's a really good comic. And I've seen very, very few people argue. There's one guy in the in the comments who just was going nuts trying to really prove that this was an awful comic, and it, it's it's it it's not. It's a good comic. It's it stays true to the lore. It's just it's good. This is not a woke comic. It's just a, I don't know what the fuck that means anymore. It's just a good comic, you know. Um, same thing, by the way. You know, I've I've interviewed him. Clearly, we're friends, so I'm biased. But I liked, I liked what I, I like Zorro. I like what he's done there. I think it's fun. It's got an adventure to it. I enjoy it. Of course, you make up your own mind. But somebody telling you like, hey, you, you can't like this because of X, Y, and Z. What I also notice is the reasons why you can't like something keep shifting around. Like, you can't like this one because it's too woke. Oh, no, you can't like this one because it's ripping off comic shops. No, you can't like this one because it's ripping off somebody else. And this one is cultural appropriation. This is like... Like, it's also quite 
you know, my daughter, who's a big fan of Among Us, quite sus when uh, the reasons you're supposed to hate something keep shifting day in and day out. But anyway, like it. I'm glad you found some things you love. That's awesome. Because that's what it should be. Like, look, we're, we're, we're spending time or reading comics or paying money. Very least, we should like it. That's why I, you know, the converse uh, side to this is if there's something you don't like, you should remove that thing like a cancer as fast as humanly possible. As, as fast as you can. Get, get the stuff you hate out of your system. Because it, it, it doesn't benefit anyone. You know, there, there was a, a brief period where it's like, well, it's fun to, it's fun to buy and hate on things. And it's like, no, nah, you're just wasting your money and time. You know, be very, very selective of your time. Thanks for listening. 